So what, what is the, the definition that you use for burnout? Well, I follow the WHO definition, the World Health Organization, and that's um, that it's workplace or institutional stress left unmanaged. It's in the it's an occupational phenomenon. It's not in the life um, aspect of chronic stress. It's specific to workplace and institutional stress, and it shows up in three major signs: high level of depletion, so frequent levels of sort of exhaustion at the end of the day, maybe not wanting to get up in the morning because you're so tired and you don't feel like you're engaged and want to go to work. Uh, maybe you're drinking more coffee or Red Bull in the day because you don't feel like you can, you know, stay motivated. And maybe you're using downers at night, like alcohol, which we've seen a lot of. Uh, you're not engaging in your hobbies outside of work. So you're sort of in that level of exhaustion where you're also emotionally distanced from work, which is disengagement, essentially. The sort of the, according to Maslow's sort of, uh, or Dr. Maslach's MBI, Maslach Burnout Inventory, the antithesis essentially of burnout is engagement. So we're seeing that right now. And then um, and then cynicism, a sense of hopelessness. Uh, and that that really is something that we're seeing more of. And the cynicism piece has really increased lately. So th that's sort of how I define it. And it is important that they distinguish this in 2019 in a joint research with the ILO when they found out after six years of a meta study, a massive analysis, that 750,000 people die from overwork alone wow. every single year, every year. They wanted to make a point. They added it. WHO added it to their international classification of diseases, made a point to say it's really serious. And I think that's so that we can have more accountability to, to the issue. Yeah. So what I wanted to ask you is, um, burnout's like a real thing because some people, you know, there's some people who are like, oh, burnout is, you're just tired. You know, it's not like a real medical thing. It's just your way of saying that you need a break, but it's actually a real legitimate thing it's recognized there are symptoms there are causes it's <laughs> it's it's a legitimate thing that people go through yeah and i love that you are establishing and reinforcing that because for us uh, you know a long time and still to this day this idea that you know burnout and it, it has actually been defined as a whiny millennial problem which exactly it's like oh, it's not real <laughs> yeah, walk it off like, I know. And this is Jill Lepore, you know, someone that's really well established writing this. And then, you know, the, the New Yorker, like these are people that are saying that we trust that, that it's just whiny millennials and it's, and, and even just saying like, we don't have religion anymore. And this is why we're, you know, we're, we're burning out. I mean, just really kind of wacky things about, um, this serious, very serious, uh, syndrome that is caused by, you know, root causes like overwork, mm -hmm. systemic discrimination, lack of fairness, lack of community, like all of these things that are very seriously contributing to it. And so I think, you know, what we need to understand, especially in Sweden, they call it extreme exhaustion disorder, and it can lead to PTSD, chronic illness, suicide. I mean, that's why we need to, like, I, when we finally started talking about mental illness, it was really helpful. And I think burnout is just this next wave of that. How do you know if you are suffering or somebody on your team is getting burned out versus just tired? Like what's the, what's the difference between just, you know, maybe being a little overworked versus legitimately like you got to stop. Yeah. You see that in signs like they're withdrawing, they're more argumentative, maybe more volatile than they used to not be before, but all of a sudden it's very conflict based, your discussions and communications with them. Uh, they look, you know, like they're extremely tired. You can kind of see it in your yeah. physical demeanor. Um, people start to complain of stomach problems, like they're sick more, they're late more, they're having a hard time getting motivated. Um, they're making more mistakes. I mean, we've seen this specifically even in, in coders and software programmers where you start to see this depletion happening with burnout. And, and then there's a lot of errors in the code. I mean, we want to be tracking sort of if that person was this sort of high energy, healthy, happy person, and then you've seen them as the workload has increased, that they've started to get more and more depleted. We don't want to misdiagnose them as underperforming. We want to probably think that they are really uh, burnt or at risk of burnout and getting to the point where they're going to hit that wall. Um, and I think one of the 
also the really interesting things that we found in the language of the research is you're starting to hear more languages, uh, language of permanence. So people starting mm-hmm. to say things like always and never, um, you know, it's always going to be like this, I, like that hopeless language. And then yeah. I using a lot of I words where people are sort of inside themselves a lot, very myopic thinking. So those are all signs to look out for and appear. 